just want this Jeep to start. <laughs> Alright, she's about to start. Let's do this. Come on. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to the channel. So today's video should be relatively quick and easy. We're just buttoning up all the little small details on the CJ7. And then after that, all this thing needs is the exhaust. Uh, custom exhaust welded on still not sure what kind of mufflers i want to get for this thing but i don't want to make it too obnoxious i want to keep it kind of quiet uh so there's not a lot of highway drone and uh, stuff like that uh, but before we get into that part of the video there's a little bit of some housekeeping stuff i want to show you guys real quick all right guys first and foremost the Toronto racing company uh website is now live so you can go to torontoracingco.com and i'll put a link down below and you can get yourself the challenger sunset t-shirt so i'm gonna show you that right here here's the package it comes in so here's the packaging it comes in and here's the sunset t-shirt for you guys that don't know it is a little bit of an easter egg to a special project we did about a year ago so get yours while it lasts because once they sell out we're not going to make them anymore and once you find out what we did you're going to wish you got your hands on this secondly we are a status racing vendor all right so if you want some stylish and safe racing gear get your hands on some status stuff you're gonna love it. It's the stuff that I use in my autocross challenger and in my road racing challenger. So uh, head over to TorontoRacingCo.com and get your hands on a set of those harnesses. All right, let's uh, move on to the Jeep now. All right, went online and we got ourselves some um, some new seat belts. We got the nice polished uh, buckle, and this is the new retractor with the uh, seat belt buckle. And this right here is a sleeve that'll keep this perched up. That way, when you unbuckle it, it doesn't just fall down and it's like under the seat. You can see I've already put that one together and it's kind of a pain in the butt, but I'm gonna show you guys how I did that first. First thing I do is grab the guide, seatbelt guide, and there's like a little beveled edge, you see that? So I wanted that facing uh, towards the seat, right? So you just wanna make sure you put your buckle in the correct direction. Before you do that, I took an old wire hanger so I can fish it through there. I put it in just like that. And then with a pair of pliers, you gotta make sure it's tight because when you start pulling on it to get it through the guide, uh, you don't want it to come undone. So you gotta twist the uh, wire hanger together. So I'll show you that. Basically, you just fish it through right there. Then you grab yourself a set of pliers. And as you grab it, you just twist this way with this. So you can get the, uh, the wire hanger around just like that. So that's, the, uh, that's definitely the easiest spot. So then you grab this. Make sure you got this going in the right way. That is the most important part. I want to do this twice. All right. All right, real quick, this is what I meant. There's that beveled piece. We've got the uh, tag going with it that way. So that way it looks like that. All right, so this is the hard part. So you've got to give it like you gotta pretend you're picking up Thor's hammer pretty much to get this thing through. And then you just gotta freaking pull on it. All right, let me get this thing through. Got it. All right, so once you get it through, like that, you just gotta unwind that. Depending on how hard you did it, you're gonna have to use your pliers again. Just... Putting new seat belts on the Jeep, that was the hardest. Something just came to mind. There's a patch job I've got to do in the body. But if you don't have to do anything crazy like that, this is the easiest, I mean, the hardest part of putting the seat belts together on the Jeep. Um, so let's walk over to the driver's side and I'm gonna show you where everything bolts up and it's pretty straightforward. All right, here's the passenger side. There's also a plastic cover that covers this, this bolt right here. But it's pretty much one. And then you've got this part right here, which is gonna bolt here, but I gotta fix something there. That bolts there. And then you've got the retractor, which bolts right here. I've also got a broken bolt that I've gotta get out of there. Um, I don't need to do any of that on the driver's side. So we're gonna knock the driver's side out real quick. This is gonna be real easy. And then we'll jump over and start working on the passenger. All 
Alright guys, you can see, this is the uh, plastic guide that keeps the buckle up straight, which is really nice. It takes the shape of the uh, trans tunnel right here. Um, so I really like the way that fits right there. Everything looks really nice. The buckles are nice and they're nice and bright and shiny. Really like that. Uh, the driver's seat is forward and the passenger seat is forward as well. So you can't really see the uh, where it's going to sit. But once I put it back, uh, it sits in like the perfect spot. So last one I got to put on is this top bolt that goes into the roll bar here. And once that one's done, I do have the caps, but they are in a storage box. So I need to grab all that stuff at a later date. So right here, you can see the bottom of the three-point uh, seat belt. Uh, the best way to do it is to mount this one first and then go ahead and put the retractor. There's one bolt at the very bottom. All right, so got the seat belt in. Everything is nice and complete. I had to cut a little hole into the uh, padding. I need to finish zipping this up right here. So I had to cut a little hole into this just because the hole wasn't lining up. Uh, the same thing with the other side. You can see that I've been uh, messing with that already. So here I've got the driver's seat pushed all the way back. And this is the three point um, seat belt finally in place. Got all the hardware in there, looking real nice, looks real clean. Again, I have the caps to cover that. It's just in a storage box somewhere else. Um, last time we left off, we had some electrical gremlins where the parking brake uh, would stay on, but we fixed all that. Uh, lights work, everything works now. So we put the keys on, ignition on, we got turn signals on both sides and with the key in the off position everything turns back on so we got all that fixed right now the thing i'm chasing is my voltmeter uh just read zero when i turn the key to on you see it shoot back i made sure everything was in the right location and it is but i have another voltmeter uh gauge a uh, volt gauge that i have so i'm going to test that out to see if it's just a gauge uh, hopefully it's something more simple than that so Got the key, the off position. Uh, I gotta tuck up all this wiring under here from when we were messing with all the wiring. So this right here is in fact the uh, wiper switch. Uh, they're super cheap. And where is, I guess I moved it over there. So anyways, the uh, wiper switch uh, broke. And it's right here, you can see it's just spinning. It's the only switch that doesn't work. The rest of the switches work. Uh, but yeah, I gotta tuck up this uh, this harness. This goes up on the steering column and none of these are actually being used. So I'm gonna tape these up, zip tie them up and tuck them in. All right, as you guys can see, I got everything uh, still loose. It's just in place, but that forward module is right down there. There it is. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace that module with a new one. Bolts in the place, bolt our coolant reservoir tank and washer fluid tank bolt everything back into place and everything up here will be um, pretty much complete. The only other thing I need to add is a oil breather to our PVC system. Other than that, uh, she's ready to rock and roll. We just got to time it, tune the carb and get an exhaust on this thing. All right, guys, it's the next day. I put that Jeep module in and I buttoned everything back up like I said I would. Went to start the Jeep and was in the same problem, the same cycle of it not starting. Um, yeah, we're out of gas, so I'm gonna go get some gas. Then I'll put some fuel in the Jeep and see what happens. It did fire off one time, um, so it turned over finally, but there's absolutely zero gas in it. Um, and I know that wasn't the problem before, but it finally actually fired off, so uh, it doesn't have that raw fuel uh, smell anymore. So we're gonna get some gas, put some gas in it, and I think it's finally gonna start. All right, so I just got back from the gas station and I decided to go to AutoZone because I needed a little PCV filter for the top of the valve cover. So I rerouted the um, PCV hose to the front port right in front of the oil fill tube uh, or the oil fill cap. And then I put this little Spectra uh, filter in the back of the valve cover. Let me show you guys that. Okay, originally I had this with this extended all the way back here. Uh, I looked up some of the forums and everyone has it in the front right here. And then they've got a filter, put this on straight. Uh, that way it doesn't get dirty. Mind you, something I don't show you guys is the amount of effort it takes to move this Jeep from the middle of the garage to the side of the garage by turning the wheel and pushing it. And it takes like forever, but that's what we've had to do. Uh, the Challenger's been in and out, uh, getting stuff done to it. So anyways, let's see if 
finally starts. So let's try this. Alrighty. Keys in there. Um, the seat. Okay, let's go. Got power. Find this bad boy. Let's go. Lord, please come on. <laughs> come to you as a humble man. Just want this Jeep to start. <laughs> All right, she's about to start. Let's do this. Come on. Yes. So we've got the Jeep running. I mean, I would, I'm not gonna take it very far. You guys can hear how loud that is, but it freaking runs. We've got that squared away. Um, I'm not sure if I put enough fuel in there or if my fuel gauge isn't hooked up, but that was the only thing not working. Voltmeter works, oil pressure works, speedometer works. So getting there, I still gotta do the passenger side seat belt. I got the driver's side done. I was, uh, I was driving without a seatbelt, but it was just right down the road. So I need to finish the passenger side seatbelt stuff and check up what's, check out what's up with the fuel gauge real quick, just to make sure that's working. I also have a couple more parts coming from Quadra, uh, Quadratech on the way in the mail, uh, which is new turn signals for the front and a new, uh, wiper, uh, switch. Mine's broken, fell apart. Um, but yeah, it's a good day guys. Let's get to work. All right, guys, so it's the next day. Weekend's over. I just got off work. Um, but what I ended up doing was I still didn't get that bolt out for the passenger side seat belt. I did replace the two front uh, turn signals on the Jeep, and I did time it. Um, so now she cranks right on. She starts like a champ, and I brought her to a park right down the road from my street just so I could get some pictures and get some video. Uh, here it is. It is by, it's by no means legal. I mean... I don't have my license plate on there and immediately when I got on the main road out of my neighborhood, which I'm really not far, uh, a cop pulled up behind me and I was like, okay, that was fast. But uh, no, he ended up living in the neighborhood and he just went about his way. So, but yeah, Jeep runs, it, with it being timed, it runs 10 times better. It cranks up on the first start. Let me show you guys this. All right, so here we are, little park right down the road. The Jeep came down here on its own power, keen the ignition. Sounds pretty angry. So, next stop is exhaust. So, in case you're wondering, I ended up timing the Jeep um, just to spec, which is like 700 and yeah, 700 RPM, 
uh, eight to nine degrees and um, tried eight degrees, did pretty good, nine degrees. She starts right up every time, so I'm really happy. But that's gonna wrap up today's video. I think we accomplished a lot. I still gotta get that seat belt done. Uh, I cleaned up the inside a little bit. I wanna clean up a little more of the wiring, but it looks like the next step is definitely gonna be get the exhaust welded on this thing. And then what else did I have to do? Oh, I need to get it aligned, like really bad. Good thing we were like maybe a quarter mile down the road from the house, so nothing too dangerous. It's definitely drivable. But she's almost ready. And uh, got some adventures already planned for this thing. So I want to thank you guys for watching these videos and supporting me. I know I've got like three different things going on. I lowered my truck, got the Jeep, the Challenger build is still very much alive. Just waiting for some time to go to some events, do some track days. But that's going to wrap up today's video. So thank you guys for watching. You know what to do. Leave a comment below. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys. Peace out.